It's been an exciting two weeks. After years of planning and decades in the making, we've now accomplished one of the major challenges of the USS Monitor project, and that's boring the guns, exposing their interiors to the world for the first time in over 150 years. There are certain iconic things that people think about in naval battles. You think about the exchange of gunfire. You're, you're doing the work, but then you realize that's the first time that's been clean in, you know, over 150 years, you know? And so there's those little moments that creep in, but I think really after the operation, there's a moment of pause and you can kind of reflect that that kind of settles in. The way I equate it, it must be how a, a physician or a surgeon, you know, is, you know, at a, sees a surgery. You sort of have to step back and just look at the project and the task at hand and not really focus on the greater meaning, you know, of, of what this actually means. With the gun boring, it's always there, you know, it was in the background that what we're doing is these things are used and you're up close to them and, you know, you can see the maker's marks and the machining marks and the file marks and you know what the gun actually did. You kind of know what it represents, but you almost have to put that to the background and just focus on the task. Projects like this are never short. They're always a long-term commitment. It's a lot of material. It's a lot of deliberation and care that goes into every part of the planning process, every little thing that's done. One of the challenges is we, we found in our research for, the, um, for understanding exactly how to build the boring apparatus was we needed to make sure we knew the exact specifications of the interior of the gun. The back of the gun actually shrinks in shape. And we had to make sure we knew the profile of the gun so you're not accidentally putting a boring bit that's spinning into the gun itself. And so by knowing where the guns were made, we were actually able to find other guns that were actually made at that same foundry and to verify the accuracy of our measurements. So the end of the first day was kind of a relief because it meant that we had done one, we had proven the system, it had worked as it was designed to work. We had gotten the concretion out of there and we had done it in one day. By the end of that first day, knowing that gun number one was clean, finished, we'd done what we set out to do, it's just a big relief uh, to, to have that. The end of day two, the end of cleaning the second gun was even more of a relief than the first one. Even kind of by the standards of archaeological conservation, which is a messy business, this is a particularly messy operation. You have water feeding into the gun, black sludge feeding back out into a spinning drill, which is just sort of slinging water and muddy black sludge wherever it wants to. There's always a giant puddle of that on the floor. Uh, sludge in this operation is a sign of success. Uh, sludge means you're getting stuff out of there. It's working as designed. Um, it means that part of the floor is probably going to be stained orange for the rest of time. Everything I was wearing that day is going to be iron stained forever. So every time you touch your face during that, you're putting a little more face paint on. By the end of it, you're covered in mud, uh, covered in water, and kind of tired. We kind of knew that morning it was going to be a long, hard day. My arms were killing me. The second day was a lot harder than the first day. We brought out screening boards. Um, it's pretty standard in archaeology for sifting through material. Um, they're quarter-inch mesh, um, steel mesh, that we then used chisels and hammers to uh, break up the material to get it through those boards and into buckets in the bottom. You can find really small artifacts in concretion. Which is just a conglomerate of iron rust, sand, uh, marine organisms, everything you expect to find on the seafloor all crunched together. We found things in monitor concretion as small as shoe eyelets, um, and those aren't things that you find in big chunks, right? It, because the big chunk is covering it up. It's extremely tiring. We were here from, what, like 8 a.m. to 9 or 10 p.m. both days. I just went home at the end of the day and went straight to bed after those. That's, yeah, it's a tiring day. The second one, we knew how long it would take. We knew how physical it would be. At the end of that, 
we knew that was the guns clean. Uh, they were ready to go on to further desalination uh, into the, the remaining stages of their conservation. To be now where they're completely cleaned out is, is an incredible feeling. Making sure that we care for these objects ensures that we're caring for that entire spectrum of the American story as well. One of the really gratifying things for me is that after all these years, we still have such a strong partnership between the Mariner's Museum and the NOAA National Marine Sanctuary Program because without this partnership, we never would have had the uh, ability to recover. Without the museum side to do the conservation and interpretation, uh, all of this would still be on the bottom of the ocean. I think there's a great impact for the, the museum and the department um, in all sorts of aspects. The fact that we were able to bore them successfully without any um, damage means that this is feasible for those larger guns and the ones that are more delicate. So this information will be shared with the conservation field so that other people can also safely bore guns. These two guns are closer to being on exhibit so that people can interact with them. This should be the first of many projects like this. They may not all be artifact related, they may not be conservation related, but, but telling stories about, about people in the sea is, what, is the business we're both in, just from different angles, and I'm sure that that will continue long after these artifacts are completed. This is kind of the beginning of the lineage of the, the naval battleship in the, the American fleet. Uh, and to have that piece of history in this area is super, super cool. And to be pushing the conservation of that along so that more people can enjoy it sooner is really, really neat. This is, this is a Navy ship, but it belongs to all of us. While other members of my family serve in defense of our nation and have done that um, for generations, I feel like I'm still doing my part too because I'm protecting our history.